Hello. So let's do another activity. In this case, we are asked to write the MATLAB code required to plot x of t, 10 cosine of 2 pi 70, using a sampling frequency of 7 Hz, and let's make a sketch of the sampling process. Okay, this is easy enough. And you have a video tutorial where I did this already. So I'm just going to do it by hand in this case. So in MATLAB, if you were to write, oops, In your script x equals cosine of 2 times pi times the frequency is 3 times t semicolon that's what we want but and everything is defined except for t so t remember we are sampling it and so the sampling instances are going to be n times, so asterisk for multiplication, ts. And what do we don't have defined there? We don't have n defined or ts defined. What is ts? ts is um, the sampling period, which is 1 over fs, the sampling frequency, and we don't have fs defined, fs is 7. So we have 7. And so the only variable that we are left to design is n, and n, if you recall, is the integer 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So this will be zero to how many, how many points we want, like, I don't know, I'm going to say times fs. Okay. Those are samples per second, we will plot one second. Let's do a sketch of the sampling process in this case. So, have a cosine signal, 1 minus 1, and so this is our x of t, and we are sampling. And so for n equals 0, this is 0, we are sampling the cosine at 0, we are going to get a 1. So we know x of 0 is equal to 1. Or when we're doing x of n, the first sample is equal to 1. And then we have this ts, which is 1 over 7. Later on, we take another sample. It's not that, that's actually a long sampling period because if you realize the frequency is 3 hertz. So actually, I should have plotted this is just. 1, 2, I'm going to do one more, 3, this, so 1 cycle, 2 cycles, 3 cycles in 1 second, okay, this is time. And what we are doing is just verily taking, a, so fs to f max will be 6 hertz, right? A little bit more than that. And so, what we have, a 6 hertz, we will be taking the next sample right here. So I'm going to, for a sketch, I'm going to do something like this. Okay. So this is the samples that we are taking. I recommend that you plot this in MATLAB. Now, the next activity is the same thing and says, assume that we reconstruct the signal NTS specifying the previous problem using a linear interpolator to generate a continuous time signal. 
and then apply an analog low pass filter, the post filter, FC, FS over 2 to generate record start with signal. And then I sketch the spectrum. Okay, so let's do this. So what you have here is that from these samples, if you just join them, this will be the linear interpolator. Just joins the sample. You get something that does not look like the original signal, right? And you may be asking, I thought that we, with those samples, like if you plug this in MATLAB, like we did, and you just plot it, it looks triangular. It doesn't look sinusoidal. Why is that? Because by default, MATLAB is going to use linear interpolation. It's going to join the samples with a line. Now, the sampling theorem tells you that if you sample at twice the maximum frequency, in, in which case here you did it because seven is more than two times three, that you can perfectly reconstruct from the samples the continuous time signal. But that's not using linear interpolation or sample and whole interpolation or cubic split line interpolation. It's, it's using band limited interpolation, meaning you add it, you superpose sync functions. Or equivalently, in the frequency domain, if you were to filter the spectrum with the AVL low pass filter. So this is the first part of the next problem of the next problem, right? You have the signal that that we created, this one, record X of N T S, you use linear interpolation. to generate x prime of t, and really those samples, those x of n samples that we have, give you a signal that looks triangular. Not what you want, okay? But even if you were to do that, the important thing is that it doesn't matter what interpolation you do, as long as you sample as twice the maximum frequency, Look at what happens. It says here, apply a low pass filter to this signal. So this signal now that looks triangular. Let's apply a low pass filter. X prime of T. We have our triangular signal. Low pass filter is our frequency response, <clears throat> and the kind of frequency is fs over 2. What do we get? We are actually filtering all the higher harmonics, and we will get the sinusoidal signal back <coughs> x of t. Let's take a look at that by looking at the spectrum. So, let's look at the spectrum first of x of t, the original one. Remember, x of t was what? 10 cosine of 2 pi 3t. So, the spectrum. has a spectral line at 3, this is in hertz, and at minus 3 hertz. And this is one half the amplitude, so 5 and 5. Okay? So this is a spectral line of, we are going to use capitals to denote the spectrum as a function of frequency. Okay. Let's do the spectrum now of X of NTS. 
the spectrum of an NTS, this was the one that was linearly interpolated. You have the same fundamental, because it has the same period, notice it has the same periodicity, so 3 Hz and minus 3 Hz, and then you have higher harmonics to reconstruct the triangular signal. So, if you go back to the previous playlist on the spectrum, you saw how we, by adding sinusoids that were harmonically related, we created, for instance, a square signal that had a fundamental and then higher harmonics, or a triangular signal, or a sawtooth signal, or a sinusoid, a rectified sinusoid signal. This is a triangular. So, what you're going to have is at multiples of the fundamental, kf0, right, and where k is, is 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., you're going to have those harmonics. So this is the spectrum right here of your discrete time signal that were linearly interpolated. As long as you have two samples per, per cycle, you are capturing the same periodicity, and so it matches the fundamental. But then you have harmonics here, those harmonics. That is what gives the triangular look feature. But then we says apply a low pass filter. So let's apply a low pass filter here. The low pass filter will be something like this. And what is the frequency? Low pass filter FS over 2. What is FS? 7. Right? So That means that the kind of frequency, if it is an ideal low pass filter, will be here at 3, 3.5 Hz. So this is the positive side of, of, of the low pass filter, the ideal one. You realize it cuts all the higher harmonics, and it is symmetrical if you do to the two-sided spectrum, the frequency response, the two-sided frequency response of this filter, like this, a rectangle. So the important characteristic is that you are actually cutting the higher harmonics and instead only keeping the low frequency components, meaning what is already at within zero and fs over two. 0 and minus fs over 2. And so what happens when you get all these harmonics is that the only thing that you keep is the sinusoidal component and that's why you reconstruct the original signal as long as you met the sampling theorem meaning fs greater or equal to 2f max. If your original signal is band limited meaning if, you, if it has a maximum frequency, for instance, because you apply a pre-filter to it, an analog pre-filter, or this anti-imaging pre-filter, now you have a maximum frequency. You sample at twice the maximum frequency. You can oversample in order not to have to use an ideal low-pass filter, so you, this will work with other filters, as long as you oversample a little bit, like in this case, FS7, where theoretically, if you're going to use the ideal filter, you only need um, three, sorry, six. And this is the important thing, that in the back end, going back to the introduction, here, when you are doing this reconstruction, It's not going to matter that much what type of digital to analog converter you use, what type of interpolator, because you are also going to have this post filter. And so, 
even if you do linear interpolation, which is not the right interpolation, or if you are doing a staircase interpolation, or 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 you hold it, you hold it. This is much easier to design a circuit that will, like, if you have that sample, you load a capacitor, for instance, you hold it up to there until you get another sample. Even if we got this interpolation, let's imagine that we did it with a zero hole which is basically we load the capacitor value, we will get a square signal out, it will be the same thing. So if you get a square signal, this is the sample and then it does something like this. You say, well, the square signal is not what we wanted. Yes, but once you low pass filter it, you get it because you're going to, in the square signal, you're also removing the higher harmonics, meaning you are keeping only what you want between zero and Fs over two. And so understand that it is in the reconstruction part when you apply this low pass filter that you remove those harmonics and eliminate these images. Consequently, the name anti-image filter. Does it make sense? It is not that important what type of interpolator you use practically. You're going to use the easiest one to make. And that's why sometimes you will just use a, a whole circuit where you get that value, you are able to keep it until you get another value. And everything is going to be about this post filter. Now, could you do it with even having to do the post filter? Yes, but in that case, for each sample here, you will need to be adding a sync function. And if you add that, you already will get this. And why is that? You are going to see in future playlists because the sync and the rectangle, meaning the IDR filter, are Fourier transformed of one another. So you have the Fourier transform and the inverse Fourier transform, meaning in frequency domain, that multiplication of this signal time is this one to get to extract here the part of the spectrum that we want we're going to see that multiplication in one domain is equivalent to convolution in the other domain this is coming attractions and that the rectangle and the sink are fully transform of one another. And so in this case, if you wanted to frame the problem all in the time domain, what you will need to do is for each of those samples here, be adding a sync function. And when you add them all together, you can do a simulation in MATLAB. It perfectly matches the original signal, independently of how complex it is. Again, not needed practically and not used practically because interpolating with sinusoids requires very complex hardware in the reconstructor. So you can simplify that hardware by just doing the easiest interpolation possible that your hardware allows and then having the post filter. Thank you.